<laughs> Welcome to the Gears Love, your one-stop shop for all things guitar culture nonsense. I'm Aaron. I'm the hill. And Sorry, I'm Cole. Listen. Joke was bad. I'm it. I'm it. I'm it. I'm it. I'm it. No, I'm you, it. you ruined it. It's too late. I'm it. I'm it. I'm it. I'm it. That was so good. I love yes. it. We're, I'm going to put the song at the end of this episode. But good. <laughs> good. But Adam like, Roar. We need, thank you we need so more people like Adam Roar. He, he never... Never starts drama. He just quietly he does his sleeve length thing. He's a super I mean, he's just, from the beginning. From the beginning. Yeah, he was literally the first person in the group, wasn't he? And we slum it hard, so you don't have to. Dong 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 dong. Uh, he was one dong, of the dong, first dong, dong. Yeah. No, remember he found the group before we ever announced oh, it. Yeah, I couldn't remember. It was just us was four in there for like a week. <laughs> <laughs> I can't remember what our plan was. I think it was like we were gonna like announce it somehow, somewhere. No, we did. Like, like we we, we just talked we about it. Episode or something. Yeah, yeah. Like we were waiting until we could talk about it on the episode, or I don't know. Like, yeah, but he, we just. We had it was yet, kind of right? at its testing stage, like we were still, you know, setting the setting the group photo, and you know, right. And he was we like, just, and we're like, oh, we have another. Somebody found the group. I guess we have a, a and group if, now. And if he found, like, I think he actually searched for it because yeah, he said he was like the Facebook happen. algorithms were pointing. Well, it's a closed group. If the Facebook albums algorithms were like suggesting it, they would have suggested other people too, because the three no, of us have like, tons of friends in common. He said it occurred to him to search for it. Yeah. <laughs> Just so, that was like a blessing from heaven. Yeah. It is. Yeah, thank heaven for little Adam. Mm hmm. His little Adam gets bigger every day. <laughs> I knew you would. See, see, you guys can't give me crap because Aaron's Adam. singing that song. About Adam? <laughs> is that a real song? Shut up. What song is that? I don't know what song it is. Aaron, what song is that song? How's it go, Aaron? Have you ever seen the movie uh, My Father yes. the Hero? Yes, and it's starring what's her name as a little oh, girl. It's Catherine Heigl, yeah, and she's like yeah. fifteen or sixteen. And I also, was literally about to jokingly guess Catherine Heigl. It's oh, her, and what's have. that dude's name? Andre what? Andre Pervy. Really? He turned out to be like a like pervy guy, right? Yeah. Oh, dude. Oh, it's uh, it's a guy who's on uh... oh, Gerard Depardieu. It's Gerard yeah, yeah, Depardieu. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Andre. Anyway, so, what in the world? Oh yeah, so I remember. Is that she likes this guy, and they're on hey. vacation. She's on vacation with her dad. She just, likes this yeah, guy, father and daughter. And she tells the dude that her dad is her boyfriend. To like, I don't know why, because she's cool. embarrassed to be on vacation with her dad. Yeah, which is so stupid. Yeah, which is like, which okay, so you're gonna impress this guy by telling have him a that your dad old boy. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So anyway, the whole like resort hears the story and they're like, "Oh, what a creep!" And then, but he doesn't know, and so he goes on like talent night to the piano and he starts playing the piano. And he starts singing the song, "Thank Heaven for Little Girls," <laughs> because <laughs> little girls get bigger every day. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's pretty terrible. And by actually, the time and he's, it is. By the time he's done with the song, like the whole place is cleared out. It's a real song. It's a real song, but okay. Now that you're say, you're talking about the movie, and I'm remembering, the whole premise of the movie is that all these people hear this horrible thing and they're complicit by just going, "Oh, that's bad," and then they just don't do anything. Right? Yeah, it's like yeah. such a bad movie. That is nobody calls the authorities. Yeah, exactly. The second somebody heard the news, they should have been like, "Call the freaking police," <laughs> and let's yeah, get this I mean, out. Do they and also, as an adult, is that the thing? I think the only reason I've heard of it is because, like, she wears, like, this swimsuit that's basically a thong in the movie. <laughs> Which is, like, it's one thing to, like, joke about this, like, Wait, oh, people that's the think... reason you've heard of this movie? <laughs> they talked about, yeah, you know, it came up in one of my uh, auto, my Google alerts. <laughs> in your Pokemon group. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, Dong Blaster posted about it. <laughs> oh, no. and, and it's like, that's like a bridge. No, they were talking about it on Doug Loves Movies or, or uh, How Did This Get Made or something like that. And when they were talking about how creepy it was that like, okay, all joking aside, like she still was like this underage girl who they made wear the swimsuit in this well, movie. Well, like, no. And she, I mean, she was probably. Wait a second. Yeah, she was 16. Oh, yeah. Really? Because she was born yeah, in 78 and the movie came out in 94. But even then, I don't, even if someone's like technically 18, if they're being, if their character is underage, I still think that's a little bit shady. Yeah, I agree. Like that well, doesn't. That's, that's been happening from since the dawn of time, right? But here's the thing. Oh, here's yeah. the thing well, about so that movie. slavery, Phil. So <laughs> maybe slavery is like... okay, too. <laughs> no, I'm not 16 and her dad is like old, right? So everyone's like in on that. They think they're dating. But then the dude that she's dating, like likes is also an adult. Yeah. <laughs> Right. So She's it's like lying it would only be slightly less illegal. Maybe he would serve less prison time. Yeah, he's Maybe. like twenty three or twenty four or something. Yeah. So it's like <laughs> Yeah, he's got like a five o'clock shadow and stuff. He, well he and well, he's he like works at the resort. He's yeah, like, he he's an American kid who works at this like <laughs> resort in the Bahamas. So that's how old he is. <laughs> it's awful. That's terrible. Oh gosh, that movie. Okay, so wait, it was 94? Uh-huh. Okay, in 94. What year did you say she was born? 78. Oh, so I'm in the clear. We're the same age. <laughs> no, he said okay. 78. <laughs> 1978. <laughs> Do you guys remember this movie called Still's 150 the years old. <laughs> Starring John Candy? Kind of tension at this point, but it was this movie starring John Candy, and he was like his mom was like super, um, like overbearing, and so he meets this new he meets this girl, but his mom's like trying to destroy the relationship or something. I don't know. Anyway, all that to say, there's this part in there where he he tells his mom, "I know you know it's the '90s. I'm just not sure you know it's the 1990s." <laughs> hilarious <laughs> that's solid uh, I think I've seen that man I love John Candy 90, 1991 um, did you guys listen to the episode did I, no. did I do what wait first I'll ask do you guys remember the movie uh, My Stepmom's an Alien no <laughs> uh, vaguely I think no. probably only from references I don't know if I've seen it they did it on how did this get made, and I remember watching it when it Wait, came out. My stepmom is an alien. What did I say? My stepmom's an alien. You said don't tell for... mom that babysitter's an alien. I searched for it with a contraction at first, and it didn't show up. What were you going to talk about, Phil? A movie? My stepmom is an alien. Oh. I was well. It's not funny if you guys haven't seen it. Okay. And it's not worth seeing. But <laughs> as far as like things that are inappropriate um, for like what's technically a family movie, yeah, that movie is like just off the rails. Yeah, and and I haven't seen it in forever. But they in this, I only like. I only remember it now because of how did this get made, but, um, right. Yes. What's the, the one with Rodney Dangerfield? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Ladybugs. Ladybugs. <laughs> Ladybugs. Yeah. Like so much of that That's movie a... is about like, you know, sexualizing these y y girls who are obviously underage. Yeah. And right. It's like, how is that? I don't know. I mean, you've like yeah. so many, so many movies and it's one thing when it's like a rated R movie and it's like, well, it's just inappropriate for different reasons now, but uh, like, how did anyone ever think that was appropriate? Right. <laughs> like, this movie, uh, like, they're, they asked for money, and the studio was like, sounds good, here you go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, I don't see so, any problem with this. I don't like, see how Ra this could come back to haunt us in any way. Molly Ringwald <laughs> put out an article recently about that kind of thing, like, because she was in some movies back in the day, and like Sixteen Candles, I think has like a scene where some dude's basically talking about date raping some girl or something. Yeah, yeah. The 
I actually wrote one a pa- of the many paper about that movie in college. Of Sixteen Candles. But so so the whole thing is like there's obviously things that we know are like not okay now that we're o- we're okay then, but like some stuff was just never okay. Yeah, that's like, what's that, crazy. Like that stuff is would should never have been okay. Yeah, and that's like, not just like a cultural shift thing. Like I don't think. Well, I don't know. Yeah, there's. Well, and here. Oh, go ahead. No, I, I'm okay. I'm not going to. What say I was going to say is. Regret. <laughs> okay. What What I was going to say is. There's there's like a, a fuzzy line of um, when w- with like, quote art right, and it's like to to say. Oh, yeah. oh! So you're just saying we should never put bad things in movies? And it's like, no, that's not the point. Yeah, the point yeah. is, the movie celebrated or normalized it at least. Yeah, or, yeah, like or, that wasn't yeah, or that wasn't like a bad these... guy. Like, exactly. Yeah, we watch movies. It wasn't with the bad murder guy. all the time, but nobody says, "Well, murder's not cool," because it's like, yeah, right. that's the whole point. Right. Hold on. There's a dog pooping in my front yard, and I'm going to see if the owner's going to pick it up. <laughs> oh, she is. She's reaching for a bag. Actually, Cole, that's very cool. um, so. <laughs> I remember being a young person and my dad telling me I, I wanted to see the movie Young Guns really bad. Uh-huh. And that's not and really all bad. My, it's great. And all my friends, all my friends were like, this young movie's Guns so awesome. Colon really bad. <laughs> and my dad said no because it because the good guys in the movie are doing they're killing, horrible, they're doing violent the things. Yeah. Jeez. And he was like, no, you can't. That's why you can't see that movie. What a wet blanket. I know. <laughs> Nerd alert. <laughs> <laughs> I bet he let you watch Robin Hood, though. Um, yeah, freaking breaking the law. Cause, yeah, because cause my dad was a freaking hippie. That's why. He probably thinks it's okay to illegally immigrate, too, even though it's against the law, right? <laughs> Never mind. We won't get into that. <laughs> It is like I I don't know I know we don't like to get political but like we always say that but we always do so maybe we do like we it. do like well, to get political but we don't like the consequences of getting political. <laughs> we get That's way fair. less political than we. Talk yeah, about yeah, today. totally. <laughs> but it's it is weird to me though because that is one thing. Like I think we've pretty much come to terms with like okay, racial insensitivity. Like speaking of sixteen candles, you know, like oh yeah yeah obviously having a character wasn't that in 16 candles yeah his name was long duck dong i think yeah Mm -hmm. and and uh aka the the donger (laughs) (laughs) phil you're not a donkey dong doug (laughs) (laughs) that's not true but what i said is true his girlfriend in the movie (laughs) calls him the donger (laughs) which is also Um, like a racist joke why like think about it. Yeah, like they're it's no, like an ironic they're like, nickname. Yeah. Well, now you guys are making it racist. We're not making it not anything, implied. Phil. <laughs> <laughs> but like I don't get don't why gaslight me. <laughs> like violence is still the one thing that is like 100% cool in all contexts no matter what. Like I've it, heard that specifically American. Yeah, it so is. So here's here's like, this, well, especially here's, gun violence. Like there's Here's of why violence. Here's why I think that's okay from a, like a psychoanalytic standpoint. I've been listening to this podcast, so I know a lot. <laughs> so apparently... Some, wait, when you say this podcast, PM? do you mean... No, I've been yeah, listening this, this podcast, to, to a, podcast? a podcast <laughs> about psychoanalysis oh, um, and okay. philosophy. And it's called The Fundamentalists. Anyway, so apparently it's the whole, it's a whole like thing that. of like, um, what do you call it? Like prohibition and desire or whatever. So if you're not allowed to do something, you want to do it. So this dude argues that America is so liberal that we have to like create things to make to like make kids have sex to make people have sex. So we have to like so he's he basically says that our like um, like hiding things like keeping things secret like that's a mechanism that we created because like you're allowed to have sex with whoever you want. But you have to make it seem like you're not allowed to. I am? To make you want to do it, right? So I think the opposite is probably true of violence. Like, if we don't show it, then it becomes more enticing to people. I don't... Mm, that's my theory. I don't know if that's true. 
but you're not a psychoanalyst. <laughs> analysis <laughs> and you don't have a podcast and you're an it. english teacher and you can't even say the word analyst yeah That's no i don't think it probably does apply to violence because like think way. about like you know pornography obviously doesn't just like take away your desire for more deviant sexual acts you know like in in many no ways but like even though them. some say it even creates though it. but yes. think about like pornography even though it's super prevalent like it's do. still people act like it's not there a lot of times yeah, or like it's still, yeah. it's hit, like it's not accepted. Yeah. And there is a lot, like... Like I, I heard know, this I woman know. say recently that her middle school kid, she was like, oh, he doesn't even know what that is. I was like, yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, he does. <laughs> sure, <laughs> right. <laughs> no, that's what definitely does. That's what's interesting. So I have like this very, you know, I moved when I was in fourth grade, and so it's easy for me to remember like at what age I was doing certain things, you know? Oh yeah. Cause you have and that like, marker. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, no, I remember living in New Mexico when I was nine years old and telling like the most awful dirty jokes ever. And it's like, yeah, my oldest son is now older than that. And so. you did not have the internet then. <laughs> right. I know exactly. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Oh man. You didn't have a Google mach- machine. We're all doomed. We're all doomed anyways, make, but it I'm is a little bit, it is a little bit kinds. crazy that, I mean, it is weird that, that, you know, sex in movies is more taboo here than it is in like Europe. The yeah. violence is less taboo, but I don't know that there's necessarily like a huge amount of significance to that, but I do think it's weird that like violence is still the one thing that's basically, it seems like it's never taboo, you know? And well, it we've sort of agreed that there are so many other things that aren't. If you think about like our like Protestant and conservative religious roots. I think it like, there's a lot of talk about don't have sex, but there's very little talk in the, about not being violent. So it's like, that's a cultural <laughs> thing. That's like ingrained in us. That, yeah. Yeah. That and partially because I think obviously many more people have the urge, have sexual ur- urges than violent urges. Well, yeah, that's true too. But it's still like, you know, yeah, it's, and part of it is like, that's kind of what our country was founded on was like violent protest and, uh, not just violent protests. It's like, violence. Oh, we got here. Hey, yeah. Who are you people? No, I'm saying violently protesting on this land. people who had the rightful place in this. Yeah. Land. I protest you. Oh. <laughs> you're being here. I use the word yeah, protest let's... when I mean genocide is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> but you know and what then... I'm saying? Like, it's very, it's very much like, I don't know. That's like kind but of it, one and of our core values, whether we want to admit it or not. Yeah, totally. Because it continued. It was once it was like, okay, you know, most of the Native Americans are gone, but then it was still like, like the population spread out so quickly that like that whole like frontier yeah. mentality was like, okay, I got it. Oh, this guy's taking my horse, so I got to shoot him in the street. Like well, that kind of and it thing solved a lot like, of problems. Like when you try to do something and it works, <laughs> like you do it again. And even though yeah, right. like. <laughs> It, it's terrible that that was solving problems or that those things, but you know, even just like the fact that we were able to go make our own country, like that was, we needed lots of violence in order to accomplish that. And so of course it's going to still small seem pox. like, well, if it worked once, let's try it again. We needed violence and smallpox. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It was a two pronged approach. Yeah. I mean, it's like uh, the best defense is good offense or something. I don't know. <laughs> It doesn't really that's, apply there. That's but. true. That's why like people who are really defensive act offensively. <laughs> Burn. True. Mic drop. Snowflakes. Hashtag. <laughs> let it happen. <laughs> or let it go. Sorry. Let, it, let go. it happen. Let it go. I meant to say let it go. <laughs> let it happen. That sounds like a... <laughs> that sounds that like not what hashtag I Hashtag look at it. I know. Hashtag let it that's go. It's like the inverse hashtag to me too. Oh gosh. Ooh. That's awful. I know. Wait, what did you Ooh. say? Your the one that you wanted to say let was it, let it go, because snowflakes Hashtag frozen. Let it go. Okay. Oh, okay, okay. Let it go. Hashtag let it go. Got it. Hashtag <laughs> snowflake. Hashtag. Okay, gotcha. Oh, speaking of things that are offensive, before that we should say no this episode sex in is your sponsored violence. by um, sinusoid. This episode is sponsored by sinusoid. I like how you said speaking of things that are offensive. <laughs> no, before that, let's do this. And but as you were saying, before that, let's do this. Phil was singing over you, so people wouldn't have heard that part. Just like speaking of offensive, yeah. let's talk about uh, Sinusoid. Speaking of offensive, we have a topic these guys? coming up. But before we get into that topic, I want to mention our sponsor, Sinusoid. Did you say Mensen? Men- <laughs> I did say Mensen. 
Okay. Or Manson. Or thanks for uh, thanks for pointing Manson. that out. <laughs> I wanted Phil, to mention. You can't just nitpick everyone for everything. I want to mention you're wrong oh, our time, sponsor. You know? Oh, Sinusoid. I was just trying. I learned it from watching you. I just rewired my board with um, sinusoid cables. Like, well, not rewired, but I good I put for my you. Pedal, I just reassembled a pedal board for the first time in a while, um, using all sinusoid cables, and I remembered how simple those um, solderless cables are, especially if you have a cable tester handy. Because Straight sometimes you, you got to be careful. Here's what I learned, and I'm going to give everyone a tip. If you're remaking cables, make sure you pull that set screw all the way out. Yeah. or not. You don't have to, like, remove it, but make sure it's yeah. completely out of the barrel. Otherwise, when you put the cable in, it will pull back the the sleeve, and you'll actually expose the things that you don't want exposed, and then it mm, won't doctor. work. Ooh. Yes, conduct And just wire. re... Put, well, and also just recut, you know, cut the little end off. Yeah, just cut... A little end off because that notch. You want to you want to pull back the sleeve and cut the little end off. No, you don't want to do that. <laughs> Yikes! Just the tip. Hashtag Wait. just the tip. But I will say I did my entire board with solderless cables. Well, I already had some cables, but all the solderless cables I built probably twelve total. Um, I never tested any of them, and they all just worked. Me too. Yeah, that Hashtag was the only too. one and I had a problem with, and I knew it immediately. I was like, it's got to be that one that I just made, because all the other ones yeah, yeah. I reused, and We're that's fine the only them. new one. And then I pulled it and out, and I was like, oh, I will yep, say that's, that's one nice thing about a switcher. We talked last time, and, and we'll probably talk more about my... Uh, oh, you can test each individual. I'm such an idiot. Pedal. Yeah, and like if one of them doesn't work, or even like yeah. if I wanted to, I could just take a pedal out like permanently and just have one of the loops empty and it wouldn't yeah. affect anything you know oh that is handy that's so handy i don't know if it's worth it but probably I don't know if it's worth it to that. look like a dork <laughs> <laughs> that was hurtful though. so let's that go back so to talking about things that are are or are not offensive Yes. Okay. The other day, someone in our Facebook group, I think it was, oh, well, we don't need to name names, but it was Mark Swartz. He <laughs> posted this thing from Reddit, right? Was it Reddit? Yeah. So he, he was Reddit. curating any of the no. content. He was like, hey, look at this. This he is was a just thing like, hey, case. look how crazy this thing hashtag, is. Hashtag look at it. Offered with, yeah, offered without comment or anything. It was just like, hey, look at this crazy thing, you know. Yeah, look at this crazy thing. And what it is is... <laughs> Hashtag look at this crazy thing. <laughs> <laughs> look at this crazy thing. I like is that. Is it gone? It can't huh? be gone. I can't find it in the group. Oh, so it's 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 called... I think Wampler, it's because pinned it to the top. No, I'm just kidding. Wampler Tone Group, co- quote, the wife, unquote, compilation. And it's um, Guitar Pedals Jerk on Reddit. Anyway, so it's this thing that someone posted about a bunch of posts from the Wampler Tone Group. And I will say this, not to defend anybody, but I will say that it's not like, no, <laughs> here's what I'll say. Anybody, this, behavior, but... this behavior is not exclusive to the Wampler Tone Group. Like you could pick no. most guitar groups or like yes. most guitar culture and this stuff would be prevalent. This just happened to be the one. And then we'll get another stuff later, but. It has become, like, it's become more of a, like, I don't know. Every every group focuses on, hey, look at this cool stuff I bought. But obviously in the Wampler group, uh, it's magnified a little bit because people want to show off their new Wampler pedals. And it's like, right. Look at this. So I think it, Wampler that it I might happen more in that group just because of that. But yeah, every. Yeah, I would group, say probably any like pedals, but any brand specific group, you're going to see more like new gear day stuff. But yeah, yeah. But it's always like like guitar culture is rife with that kind of nonsense. It's rife you know? with nonsense. There's so much guitar culture nonsense. You could almost make a podcast about it, Bill. <laughs> you know what a podcast yeah. is? It's like DVR radio. Slam dunk. So let me read you some choice quotes. Here's here's bro blank blank blank. <laughs> That's my favorite one. Just Does that mean that he's bro. like that he's his name is bro or is he like a like a, a monk or something? No, I like to think he, no, yeah, he's like a pastor yeah. of some kind. Where, <laughs> yeah. like, in the, yes. like in my church, he's brother, real brother and sister, you know. He says, am yeah. I the only one that has to hide some of my pedal purchases from my wife sometimes? LOL. 
Nah. <laughs> nope. Am I the only one that lies to my eternal companion? LOL. Anyways. <laughs> so keep going. Uh, something about a purse. Uh, my wife. It, any, so it's just like this general feeling Man. that wives are like wet blankets, right? They don't want us to have any fun. Yeah. We have to like sneak around to We have to ourselves. lie to them in order to have hobbies. So busted had to send had this sent to work so the wife wouldn't see it. Supposed to be delivered Monday. She works with me on Fridays. Guess what showed up early? She didn't say a word yet. What an angel. What? What a dork. Yeah, well wait, so that you. one's kind of taking the other side. He's like, Look at I he's like, tried, I expected my wife to be a complete jerk. I did this. I it did this disrespectful thing, jerk. Who did, and who look did? how cool my wife is. But he's like so surprised far. by how cool she was. And he says, "Yet, yeah, like, oh, she'll get pissed at me at some point. <laughs> she'll probably get pissed at me for something else or something." What's that verse about um, the nagging wife on the roof? Um, um, the verse in from the song? Bible. I don't know. Is that Same like song, different verse, verse second verse, same as the first? <laughs> Fine, I'm Googling. <laughs> yeah, it's like you, it's something about a... My wife cracked the code. Like Easy way to get me to put clothes away is to set them on my amp. Jeez. I just did. Anyway, so it, it, here's... Yeah, and that one thing, isn't like, even like trying to get new gear. That's just like, oh, my stupid wife. Like, what's she, it going to do? Like... She she needs me to do the absolute easiest part of doing the laundry. Like she already took my disgusting underwear and washed it for me and dried yeah. it and folded it. But now I have to put it away, but I can't even be bothered to do that cuz I'm too busy playing guitar. <laughs> yes. So like on their own, none of these posts are especially egregious. They're like annoying, right? But it became and like they're not funny. Thing. Like they're I didn't no, see they're any not that funny. were particularly funny. It's become like this thing, like this shorthand for like the nagging wife which is a well-known phenomenon but so what happened was a while back some people like called it out i guess on one post and it kind of went crazy in that group yeah. for like a day and, and um, like a couple people from our group in, a couple people from like... our group they're also in our group the gear slum like we're there and there was mention that people were like cross promoting or whatever but anyway we never instigated it so shut up everybody everybody shut up everybody shut your mouth you shut up verse. you shut up just shut. Nope. Just shut up. Shut up. Just shut. shut up. Shut up. Shut up. Just shut up. Shut up. Shut up. Just shut up. Shut up. Shut it. Isn't that a Black Eyed Peas song? Shut <laughs> the hell up. I'm I'm serious. I am too. Okay, what's the verse, Phil? Actually, I don't know if it's a Black Old Testament. Is, I'm. This is, and I'm doing this for uh, for Brother Cole here, King James version. Bro, Bro Cole. Cole. <laughs> uh. It is better. To dwell in a corner yeah. of the housetop than with a brawling woman in a wide house. I'd love to see. Why do like, you bring up? Why are you bringing this into this? Because he's saying that like this, <laughs> this form of chauvinism has always existed. Oh, it's not new. Okay. I get you. Better to live. This is the NIV for. Uh, I wanna, yeah. I want to hear what the, what adjective they use in some of the other versions. Better to live on, on a corner of the roof. Then share a house with a quarrelsome wife. Quarrelsome. Quarrelsome. Like, I want to see Quarrel. the translation. Earplugs for a minute here, kids. I want to see the translation <laughs> that's so progressive that's just like, then, then with a bitchy <laughs> wife. Where's the message? <laughs> Where's the message? Let's hear the message. <laughs> so anyway. What, what, well, is that Old Testament? It's got to be like Proverbs. Proverbs. Oh. That doesn't count as a Bible. It's a proverb. A bunch of poems. Ugh. Nobody even dies. It's boring. Um. So <laughs> so even dies. so it got a no little violence. out of hand, and there were things that were said by people, <laughs> etc. Thing, things were said. Mm-hmm. People said some things. Mistakes I don't know, were made. Pop, he said some things like "mf" yeah, and "suck my." Boop, boop, boop. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Eddie Murphy, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Eddie Murphy minute. Phil, it's a little after you. Aaron's time. wearing a red leather suit right now. <laughs> Jason <and> I, I <laughs> am. <laughs> Resembling Michael Jackson so, from Thriller. So here's the thing. Okay, so the Wampler group. Yeah, someone um, else talk for a minute. So it's it is it's called the Wampler Tone Group. And it is. It used to be called like 
Tone Chasers or something. Yeah, yeah. But it's got his name right in the group. It's, you know, Brian Wampler is in there, and he's pretty active, more so than a lot of builders, you know, because that's kind of where his brand, you know, he kind of made a name for himself in forums and stuff like that. And so he's always been, like, part of why he's so successful is because he's part of the community, you know. And same with Josh Scott, I guess. But, um, but he's also in the Gear Slum, and and one of the moderators in the Wampler group is in the Gear Slum as well. So, uh, well, several of them. Yeah, because yeah, they all joined after the group last so, kerfuffle. Yeah, because our group is so great, they couldn't avoid not being. Well, in so it. like full disclosure, this is what happened after the last <laughs> time. After the last time, um, a few of them messaged me. And we're like, hey, just so you know, there's like no bad blood. We don't. And I was like, whatever. We didn't send people. And they're like, okay, cool. And then some of them friend requested me, and then they joined our group. Which, whatever. I let them in because yeah, we yeah, get I it don't in. Care. Because well, they popular. obviously they and had screenshots from the group anyway, so someone was like sending them things that were happening. There so was a like, mole. Who cares? They're gonna be in. There was a well, mole. And Brian, and we don't there is a there... dermatologist because we don't have insurance. Brian joined the group a while ago because yeah, uh, Brian Blake through Blake. Blake told him to. Yes, there's a mole, and just so you know, we don't know who you are, but we will find you. Yes, and we will kill you, and you will be dealt with. Dealt, dealt with. We don't like you. <laughs> we don't know you, okay? <laughs> <laughs> don't like you. Don't like you. I don't know you, okay? Which brings us to our next sponsor. No, let me. I'm still <laughs> Let's talking. keep going because we barely scratched the surface. We got to dig deep. So, okay. So, the Wampler Tone. Let group, it happen, Phil. And they talked about this on Chasing Tone let recently about like how some people say, oh, you you shouldn't be advertising in this Facebook group because it's, it's just a discussion group. And it's like, well, like it's tied to the. Like it's it's a group that was made for a specific business. Like, of course. If you make a group, group you is can do whatever you want in that group. It's going to foster stuff that is that is positive, and especially just the culture itself. Like, if you were to go in there and talk crap about Wampler pedals, like, everyone would shout you down, obviously, because that's, like, why they're in that group, because they like his pedals. Well, it's named that. Like, if it was our group or, like, something, you know, random, like, oh, guitar pedal discussion, and then everything yeah, was an yeah, exactly. advertisement for Wampler, that's different, but... <laughs> Yeah, yeah no and that's what I'm saying. Like Facebook is not Wampler group. Yeah, like some parts of Facebook are more geared towards marketing than others. Like that's just how it works. But really, but just Brian, a, like, I think I get targeted ads that are like made just for me. Don't say that. You freaking never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, you get those ads, but then do you buy those things? I no, because they're already they're sold, all, dude. That's the whole point. Sold. Reverb makes Ugh. all his money by advertising stuff that already sold. I don't know how, but they must. All right. Ugh, that makes me so mad. As I'm scrolling through, first of all, Sean, you got to give it a rest with this anal log joke. It's just not hitting, buddy. Like, it's not going to work. It's never going to work. Just, just drop it already. Yeah, just let just it drop. Gadoosh. Drop the anal log. <laughs> Gross. <laughs> Why can't I find this thread? So, so everyone's like, oh, typical Wampler stuff, and and not, like Wampler group stuff, and then some people are like, well, uh. Uh, you know, Wampler is fine. It's not. So this is what always happens. Someone says like, Hey, maybe we should like cut this stuff out. Cause it's like, it could be seen as offensive and like unwelcoming to, to a lot of people, especially women. Right. And then someone else is like, Oh, well you're just being sensitive and like easily offended. And it's just a joke and like, get over it. And then it becomes yeah, this yeah. like war where like the one side is basically saying, maybe we should think about this a little bit more and like be cool. And the other side is like, I'm going to do whatever I want. You can't tell me what to do. But to be fair, like you are like, you're kind of Clearly showing biased. which side you're on, but cause it really is like you decide which side you're on early on. And then it's like, well, I guess I'm stuck with this side <laughs> and true. like, there's nothing I can do about it. So I have to argue for it, even though like, I don't really agree. I mean, and I made the comment and again, well, whatever I made the comment that it kind of, Reminds me of how a lot of people who had voted for Trump react now, where it's like, oh, yeah. geez, this guy, like, could he give it a rest already? But it's like, well, I voted for him. I kind of, so now I got to defend him. Team, you know? yeah. yeah. Like, and I don't think, I think a lot of people are like, man, I don't, I don't want to keep supporting this guy. So, but I think once you've made, once you made your decision, it's hard to then change to the other side. But, 
But then Brian came in and weighed in. And, of course, Brewer is in there. Like, And he he's not capable. Christian of... Brewer. <laughs> yes, Christian. Brother, our, our bro brother Brewer. Brother Brewer. Brother okay. Brewer came in and like, like some people's opinions are offensive to me and to other people, but just the just the fact that you have an opinion that is different than his is offensive to him, and <laughs> and he's like incapable of being anything but mean about it, you know. Like I agree with Brewer on a lot of things, but that's just how he is. Like he feels like it's his calling in life to be a complete jerk to everyone who thinks differently than he does. <laughs> And so that's how he reacts, and he comes in and just says, well, because Wampers He really is like a missionary in that way. Yeah, like he yeah. genuinely, like I've seen posts from him about like, it's not enough to just be silent. Like you need to shout down people that think different than you. And, you know, he's he's obviously doing a good job of that. But um, but he came in pretty hot and like directed at Wampler saying like, yeah, it doesn't surprise me. Everyone in there is trash and like Wampler's trash and blah, blah, blah. And Wampler kind of like... I'm sure he got and tagged. Somebody, somebody tagged him. Yeah, and that's which is and like then he instantly already, commented. It's like tattletailing or something like that. Oh, did someone? And yes. and he commented like Hey, you know, I like I don't you know, I don't I don't condone everything so that happens in my group, but understandably he he kinda has to take a lukewarm stance because it's a group of his customers. So he like the culture of the yeah. group can't be focused on like, hey, you guys aren't allowed to make these jokes that you want to make because it's like, well, they're making these jokes because they're buying my pedals, and so I don't want to, you know, right. And it's like every one so of those jokes is like a hundred like, bucks in my pocket or something. But he would never admit that. Like he he can't admit that. Like, yeah, sorry guys, right. I can't really take a stand because it because it's all about the Benjamins, you know. But like that's <laughs> the reality, of the situation. Like I think at a certain point he would take a stand, but this isn't something that's like. So overtly, I don't know. It's, yes. It's like subtle annoyance stuff. Like nobody's in there right. directly harassing anyone or anything like that, which I, he would obviously take a stand or something like that, but it's. Yeah. And I, there are, there have been things that were deleted and other things and posts. Yeah. Sure. And he, <clears throat> yeah, there have been things that he's addressed directly, but when it's just like, man, there's kind of some, there's kind of a lot of people in your group who are just kind of douchebags that aren't funny. Like, well, what is he supposed to do? Just, you know. Like I kind of understand where he's coming from, but at the same time, it makes like you have to take what he says with a grain of salt a little bit, just because he has skin in the game and none of the rest of us do. You know? Yeah. Well, I also think like that becomes a problem because not that specifically, but what happens is because he does have to take a nuanced stance, like everyone else, it's on Facebook, so people are basically like, if you do this, you're a terrible person, right? Yeah. Not like I disagree with this thing that you're doing. Yeah. It's like you are a bad person, and so. We they get entrenched in this like warfare basically and like yeah oh well you didn't delete these posts so that means you're like not only complicit but also like yeah you might as well have posted supportive them. and even worse like you support the things that I read into them and the like the culture that it represents and all this stuff like put on yeah. this one person yeah which is a like lot it, which which is why I think those people then get defensive and they're like double yeah. down again because it's like you're attacking me now as a person and like i don't i'm not that i just in this one place i'm like maybe different from you or whatever and and not to keep bringing back I'm politics but i think but i think it is a man. decent analogy that like it's the same reason when people try to say well if you voted in this two-party system if you chose one of your two choices that makes you a racist like well mm. that's just ridiculous obviously because yeah i mean you had one of two choices, but also like that then makes you even more like, well, screw you. Not only am I not racist, but now I'm just going to dig my heels in harder because like, you know, you're, you're right. just attacking me uh, unwarranted, you know? And so it's the same. I don't know. Cause people make everything personal and they make everything so polarized that it's not possible to just have a, a reasonable discussion about it, you know? Yeah. So anyway, I came in and I you I think you commented early on to Cole um, some different things. Basically, what you're saying now, I came in. Well, and I kind of like, I kind of tried to break the tension. There was like a sub thread that Wampler was commenting yeah, that went on and was, forever, <laughs> and I was kind of trying to break the tension because it was basically Brewer and Wampler going back and forth. And part of me wanted to be like, right. hey, like I like yeah. Brewer and everything, but he does not represent this group. Like he's, you know, he's he's an extremist for sure. And uh, yeah. So let's let's uh, all have a laugh or whatever. 
because we we also have a group that we are defending and Brewer gives us a lot of money, so we need to defend him. Yeah, one well, part of it, I jumped in when he was like, <laughs> I certainly don't think the slum is like some authoritative. I don't know. He he kind of took a jab at the slum, and I wanted to be like, well, first of all, like, you know, I know as much about a lot of this stuff as you do, for one thing, but obviously I'm not going to get into that. But he, he, there are things that rub me the wrong way about Wampler and arrogance is one of them. And so if he's going to come in our group and say like, ah, oh, you guys are all just a bunch of idiots anyways, then I'll be like, then I, I'm not going to stay him for that. If he claims that I'm we're all racist, either. like I'm fine with that, but I'm not well, going to, of course. Yeah. I'm going to let him say we're stupid. So, so that was kind of when I jumped in and, it, and yeah, it was kind of the same. I mean, it was kind of the same response on the opposite side of saying, well, our group isn't all bad. Just brewers angry all the time. So here's where I come down, which or, isn't that go ahead. I and sorry, I no, don't isn't that the argument on the other side? What's that? That's not what I mean. I mean, tell me how that is not the argument. Which argument? What Cole just said about like, hey, Brewer doesn't represent all no, of totally. us. No, totally. Yeah, yeah, totally. But that's the oh, thing, yeah, yeah. is like I seriously that's the thing. If somebody if somebody posted a Reddit thread with like a hundred screenshots of people behaving like that in our group. I would think, yeah, like, that's man, true. Maybe we need to change something. Like it, it's different. But than what like if somebody one idiot? Like, what if somebody created a Reddit thread that was just all of Brewers? <laughs> but that would still like, be in just our one group. person. <laughs> like that's so one person. Yeah, exactly. Like, check out this dude <laughs> in this group. Look at this. Look at this maniac in this one group over here. I love the fact. <laughs> I it, it makes me happy to think of like Brew's response would be like, "Yeah, I'm winning. I'm, it's working." I yeah. know. I, you're right. So speaking of this, though, as this is happening, the this Milwaukee guy, Brewers have won twelve straight. This guy, <laughs> this guy in Guitar Nerds dropped a hard R on me earlier, <laughs> and uh, basically he was saying like reverb. Showed me this ad in Facebook. When I clicked on it, the guitar had already sold. Why do they do that on purpose to try to get me to their website? And it's like, they, what, like they have no benefit to trying to sell a guitar that already sold. They don't make money from ads. They pay money for ads, and then they make money by selling guitars. And uh, I was like, uh, so someone said, or the advert worked and the guitar sold. And he said, yeah. In the second that elapsed from me seeing the ad and clicking on the say on the site, and it's like, no, some like you're not the only person in the universe who saw the ad. So I said that, and he replied, "Do you understand how tailored ad, tailored ads work, you retard?" And I didn't appreciate that, to say the least. But just a second ago, Jay you Cross didn't? Jay Cross commented and said, "I'm not having that at all. I don't even know I'm giving you the benefit of the doubt. But if you don't delete this immediately, you're out of the group." And Sai is a patron of theirs. I'm almost positive. Boom. So like he like this is a business for them and. He is taking a hard line stance on something that he that I agree with him on. And and so I think I don't know, it, it's not impossible to to do that, I guess, is what I'm saying. And also like freaking suck it, Cy Bramwell. You yeah, think I think the thing is like you people think that you can have, have a, a non stance and, and don't. I don't think you can like. Yeah, because that is by not taking a stand, you're allowing it and allowing it is a tacit endorsement a stand. of it like you're yep. taking a position and so like that was a thing and i think with the wampler he kept saying like well what do you want me to do like, like tell him to tell stop people, it tell people idiot. not to do like, it like well, it's then so I'll, easy but then i'll and then it's like well yeah people are offended but then if i tell people to stop then other people will be offended by that so you're always going to offend someone so like what do you do yeah. how do you not offend everybody yeah the it's and like, here's the choice yeah the choice is what is right exactly <laughs> like, like slave well, those over, people slave are, they always want to say when they had to sell all their slaves you know or when they couldn't yeah. have slaves anymore like they always want to say like show me a way to offend nobody and then i'll yeah. be on your it's side like, it's like that doesn't exist yeah you know that, that doesn't means, exist so, show me a way that i don't actually have to take a stand well, in any have, way you or have, have to choose like which group you offend yeah and and that's the thing though like he could he he has so much way more than we do in our group it, like he has so much influence over that group yeah. in general like everyone yeah, there just no one worships really respects him. Half us the people in our group hate us they just like the group yeah but like if he were just <laughs> a couple times to be like hey guys let's chill out with the you know the, you know the old nagging wife thing gets a little old sometimes or yeah it's not even really well fun. and like that would but be, to be enough fair, to he completely did. change the tide. Yeah, and, and to be fair, he did. Yeah, yeah. A couple days later. Yeah, yeah, totally. 
Yeah. Which he did. He came into his own group to all this. And he posted a thing and he said, This wife stuff must stop. <laughs> He's against marriage now, actually. And people <laughs> people went <laughs> a little a people weird went nu- like nuclear. And he did lose a few people. Like people quit the yeah. group. But it's like, okay, you lose but, ten people out of thirteen thousand, like that's I was that surprised restores... at how many people were like there were so many people that were commenting. Yeah, people finally, spoke up. They're like, "Oh you. yeah, I thought this too, and I just never said anything." And like, yeah. thanks for doing this. It's like, and actually, that happens. <laughs> that happens in our group too, which apparently, like, people who sort of lean more conservative will comment in our group when anyone ever, you know, expresses an opinion that at in that direction. Yeah. They're like, "Yeah, I wanted to say that, but I didn't really feel what we could do better." So here's two takeaways. Let's. I'm gonna every, everyone give a takeaway from this situation. My okay. two takeaways are one. You said a takeaway, our, and now you're giving two. Yeah, everyone give a takeaway, and I'll give two. <laughs> <laughs> my, my first takeaway is that our group is not about bashing other groups. We, I'm fine. I'm like super into talking about issues and using examples, but I don't want it to be like a breeding ground for like let's plan our attack and then take it to this other group and attack. And we've because that is we've dumb. had this conversation about Jatipwa in the past. Like yeah, many times. Like yeah, Jatip was dumb, but like that's not what like that's not the point of this group. You know, talk about yeah. how dumb they are. What? It's not. It's not the only point. And like, my okay, second they wear pointy is shoes. This. They spend too much money on pedals. You know, they believe in God. Like who does that anymore? I'm. We're doing the hard work. We're. In, and I'm just kidding. And Wobbler comes in at the last minute, <laughs> takes, gets all the glory. It's like, and look at this guy. The, we lose the jar for him. Big stand. <laughs> <laughs> we did. We lo- we did. That's exactly it. We but no. But so here's him. what I think. I think that because he is basically mostly in his group, that he saw it as like in the context of that. And when he was able to, not that we did anything, but when he saw it like in our group, and like this is how people outside of that group see that. Then he was like, oh, okay, maybe it is like a bigger deal than I thought. Yeah, or totally. Or then well, I was willing and, to admit, at least. And then when he made that comment, or when he posted that thing, then it was like, oh, it's not just outside of my group. There's a large yeah, yeah, exactly. portion yeah. of his group in the that group. felt the same yes, way. Exactly. That didn't say anything because they were like, They're not this is endorsed. It. Yeah. And, and part of it. Because it felt endorsed. That like really kind of restored my faith in humanity. Because not like, I didn't think that it was like. You know, nothing that Wampler was doing was immoral. It was maybe frustrating, but it it was understandable. But it was it was nice to see that obviously his knee jerk reaction was what it was because he gets brought into this conversation where a ton of people in another group are crapping on him. Yeah. And so obviously his initial response is defensive, but once he slept on it, he realized like, oh yeah, maybe we do need to be better or whatever. And yeah. So I I thought it was cool, you know. I will say that at one point they did unfairly pile on to one single person, and that's not okay. Not to, in the R group, but Who in is the they? previous, the people, at, the Wampler admins. Yeah. Mm. They piled on. In one like of our very favorite, inappropriate one of ways. Our favorite females. And I'm not, I'm not going <laughs> to give all the details because that's not our story to tell, but no. I will say like but that's it, not okay and like that should not happen, and we're definitely not defending that or saying that it's. Like that's different from just no. the wife jokes. That's a very different. So thing. we're talking about Catherine Heigl, yeah. right? Yeah, dude. They're Kevin Heigl. Her just because she wanted to show her butt when she was sixteen in this movie. Like, get over it. Our guys. favorite female, clearly, <laughs> Catherine Heigl. Guys, can we not just call remember, them females? Female's an adjective, not a noun. All right. Yes. Um, yes. Very yeah. good. Hey, yeah, language is fluid. So, <laughs> but yeah, I thought it was. I mean, it was kind of cool. It, it it speaks nothing of the previous incident. I think that that showed a lot of ugliness. I think. Yeah. And this one sort of had a happy ending, and hopefully that's yeah. you know it is what it is. I guess. It is. Everything is. What it is. <laughs> you know, <laughs> all things we just played are the game. We just had to execute on the field. We didn't execute well enough. It is what it is. At the end of the day, <laughs> we're just we're moving on to Cincinnati. We're Dude, looking forward to Cincinnati. Just focus us on defense. <laughs> Have you guys? Listen to Pistol Shrimps before? No. Pistol Shrimps? No. It's this. I've listened to Detlef Shrimp. Shrimp. Obviously, we all have. And we should continue to listen to Detlef Shrimp. He's a voice of reason. Oh, no. I meant um, the song. Oh. I meant the hmm. basketball player. But I, I meant the song named after the basketball player. It's this uh, this women's rec league 
basketball team, mm. and these two guys, uh, man, what are their names? It's Matt, Mark McConville and someone else. At any rate, there's two comedians. Um, they do like live commentary, like they they go to the game and set up mics and record this podcast, and they're doing like play by play of the game. Mm. One of the guys' wives is on the team, you know. But one of my favorite parts is they <laughs> like some of the women will come over at the end and they'll interview him and they just throw out the most the dumbest like you know athlete platitudes that all the athletes use that have absolutely no meaning but they're just like trained to say it you know? yeah and it's awesome but the podcast is actually really good what's it called pistol shrimps pistol shrimps and that's such a good name <laughs> i know it is good and there's it's pretty funny they're, that's what their team name is, and then they play against mm. all these other ones, and I'm trying to remember some of them, because they're always like these, uh, you know, played on words or whatever. Oh, crap. Oh, they made they're a funny, though. documentary? Yeah, like they kind of got popular because oh, Aubrey, Plaza, uh, is cause Aubrey Plaza was on the team at one point, and so they, I see. they'd talk about it. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's a really good podcast. That's funny. They went and did commentary of the National Spelling Bee at one point. It's weird. <laughs> So, That's cool. Anyways. You know what I want to talk about is Gun Street Wiring. I I got to mm. apologize to those guys. Last week I kept saying Gun Street Wiring Company. Actually, the last two episodes, and it's Gun Street Wiring Shop. So if you're looking, their shop. I'm sure if you They're look just, for their company, you'll find <laughs> it. But yeah, there's this other company called Gun Street Wiring Company, and they're like, man, there's been a major uptick in sales lately. What can we attribute this to? <laughs> And why do people keep asking us about Hugh O'Kane? <laughs> uh, Hugh O'Kane? I don't even know what they're saying. It doesn't even make sense grammatically. Have, there's um, this stupid, there was this old commercial for Rosetta Stone, and it's this German guy, and he's like listening to the radio. Like, he's like not listening to the radio, he's like on a submarine, right? And he's like listening to like, like people yeah. calling on the radio. Yeah, yeah. And the ship, the ship calls out. What are you sinking? <laughs> yeah, it's like, we're sinking. <laughs> We're sinking. <laughs> and he pauses for a minute and then he says, What are you sinking about? <laughs> so good. Oh, man. <laughs> it's like the dumbest dad joke. Yeah, it's so good. Yeah. It's so good, though. It's like a million, two, three million dollar dad joke commercial. Yeah, exactly. And they advertise it when the thing had already sold. I mean, it's ridiculous. Ugh. <laughs> yeah, the thing I tried to buy the thing and it was gone. <laughs> I was talking. I've mentioned Gun Street to a couple of people because so, um, what was it? Chris. Oh, so Chris Sly posted in Six Cycle Hum, I think, about like he has a three pickup guitar, a three humbucker guitar, and he wanted to like figure out a it's way like a... to to get more options without putting a five way switch in. Like mm-hmm. with the standard switch, and I was telling him maybe you could do like a push pull or something, blender pot or something that, and that they could help you with that. Um, and then my friend, who wait, this was Chris, the Chris Sly, yes, American Idol Chris Sly, correct, yeah. Ooh, you talk to him all the time. <gasps> I've talked to him many. I've talked to him three times. Okay. <laughs> I <I've> talked <laughs> to him many. I have to go all three back. times. All right. Um, I don't know how many times. And then my other friend who's local, my other friend, my actual friend, my IRL friend, he, <laughs> he, I'll, I'll talk about him probably next episode when I talk about my, uh, my new delay pedal, but he, uh, what do we talk about when we talk about new delay pedals? Yeah. Raymond Carver. Um, what was I saying? Oh yeah. He has a five, like a, the Nashville telly and he has this weird okay. switching on it where it's like, it has a three way switch. But then it has, so like a standard telly, you know. But then it has a yeah. little toggle switch that basically switches between the bridge and the middle pickup. So like in one setting you have bridge, bridge neck, neck, and then in the other setting you have middle, middle neck, neck. Does that make sense? Uh, does the toggle of aff- it doesn't does affect anything? The- it just swaps out. You can either choose bridge or middle. Okay. And then it operates like a normal three way switch. Operates like a normal three way. Got it. Does that make sense? Did I explain that well? It's it's a little confusing to me still. Um I'm trying to play with it. So imagine basically like when you do the switch, it's just like moving your 
bridge pickup forward. Okay. So now instead of the bridge being engaged, and it's not always engaged, now it's the middle. But the middle pickup is takes the place of the bridge on your three-way switch. Mm-hmm. So in one position, you you have no bridge pickup, and in the other position, you have no middle pickup. So it's like a three-way tally switch in either position. The difference is, do you have the bridge or the middle pickup? Anyway, so I was telling him, like, he could do more things if he ever wanted to do, like, the bridge and middle pickups together because he can't do that. And I was thinking that Gun Street Wiring Shop would be ideal for both of those situations because they do custom jobs as well. And, Phil, didn't you do, like, a weird thing with your Jazzmaster? I did. What did you do? The weird thing I did with my Jazzmaster is kind of... um. I think it basically gave the um, the four pot control of a Jazzmaster mm. um, a um, like a Les Paul wiring. Oh, okay. But also the so individual um, tone and volume for both. Pickups. So the the um, the rhythm circuit, the little the little guys up at the top. Uh huh. Those are both tone, okay for for each individual pickup. The rollers, pickups. yes, and then the um the ones that are the actual uh, like knobs. Yeah, the actual knobs. Those are both volume. Uh-huh. Um, and then the rhythm switch, um, is does the uh. Like phase inversion, uh, it's, or um, parallel, series parallel. Yeah, series parallel. Okay. Cool. So then you so, do like a so it's basically like a four way tele switch. I mean, in function. Yes. Mixed with a right. Les Paul wiring. Well, and and each and each pickup has its own volume and tone control. Right. That's cool. Yeah, it's very cool, and it was honestly, it was. Um, really it was kind of a pain to um to install uh-huh. um only because uh the instructions like i th- i guess this is just the problem with the jazzmaster in general like because you can't put everything onto your pick guard and then yeah yeah so it's like you you kind of have to do it in pieces and then i was like wait did i mess this up like oh because the way the pickups just kind of hang yeah so so i didn't have enough room to just mount everything to the pickup and then look at their um you can't really call it a schematic right because it's like it's like a diagram yeah um schematic you have to like have knowledge to understand and they're the things that they send out are way more user-friendly yeah it's just like a picture basically yeah, but there's so many freaking wires in the Jazzmaster, and there I think there's more there with this wiring. So maybe uh, there's a lot in a regular one too, because basically the neck pickup goes up and then back down to the knobs, so it goes to the top. Oh, that's then, true. But yeah, that's true. I guess there might be less than in this, yeah, or fewer. I don't know. <laughs> okay, you got me. I kid. Um, what you should so do yeah, is it, put some humbuckers in there with like coil splitting. <laughs> And add some more <laughs> chaos to what you got. I think I'd need to honestly, I think I would need to like take a um I'd need to like route out more <laughs> of the cavity <laughs> to fit all if because there's barely there's Yeah, jazz masters are there. tight. Like there's a lot going on in there and there's not that much room. Yeah. Uh, Instead of like this um years ago I bought some like super cheap um strat copy uh, and um it had like a standard it was like a the pick guard was um a bunch of upgraded like um it was a single coil pick guard mm. but it had a bunch of um those uh p rail oh yeah um like not the p humbucker things yeah in in the um single yeah, coil yeah. frames and I was like, oh, sweet, I'm going to buy this thing and sell these pickups and make some money. 
And when I took the pick guard off, the cavity was freaking huge. Right. It's just a big route, swimming pool route. It was like a just a big, giant <laughs> space. And I don't know if that means, like, whatever this guitar was originally, if it was, like, you know, a bunch of humbuckers. But it seemed like there was a way more room than necessary. Yeah, probably. Um. I mean, sometimes but they yeah, do that I, in cheap guitars so that you can swap stuff in a lot of times, and they're, it's easier just to do one body route. One route style, yeah. options they make, yeah. But, like, I would assume that there's a benefit to removing the least amount of wood possible, right? Like, I'm sure that some people would swear by, like, oh, that's more weight, yeah, that's but more that wood, that's more sustain. Yeah, like cost-effective benefit for cheap guitars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. totally. But, like, that's... That is the argument on the reverse side, right. right? Remove as little as possible so that you have that mass or whatever. Like our like our buddy Paul Reed Smith says. Yeah. It's a subtractive art. Should I be worried yeah. that you were having this conversation without me? No, you should be happy mm. because for once we can do it without you yelling at us all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I will say though that American strats, like the more expensive a strat gets, the more wood is taken out of it. Shut up, Cole. Really? Sorry. I'm just kidding. So like you're American saying strats. that, like, the custom shop ones just have, like, no wood? <laughs> yeah, they have a swimming pool route. <laughs> no, like like most... <laughs> That's what this was. Like, a lot of squires you're talking are about just routed for all single yeah. coils, and then... Well, actually, nowadays, I bet a lot of the squires are routed for two humbuckers, because a lot of them sell with two humbuckers, but... HSH. But Mexican strats are HSS, and American strats are HSH. Oh, snap, crackle pop. But... The wood doesn't really affect anything anyway, so... But, um... The wood does not affect everything, <laughs> but it does affect some yeah, things. Yeah, sure, affects something. It affects the weight of the guitar. I'd like to think... I'd like to think my wood affects some I'd things. I'd like for you to think occasionally, too. Yeah, before you speak. <laughs> Aaron was being so nice to me, and then Cole came back. <laughs> And magically, he turned mean. I wonder. Uh, wonder what's happening here. He's just trying to so, impress me. I got called out in real he's, life yesterday. Someone said, "Someone said to me, they're like, you know how like certain some people like they have things that they always say. They're like you always say, let me tell you this. <laughs> it's like, that is accurate. I, said that. I do say that. What? Mm -hmm. What did you say? I, I, I said that on the podcast. No, you did, but I was saying someone told me that yesterday, too, life. like face-to-face. -face. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> to my you face. say it in real is, life to I've people? I've never noticed it, but, yeah, that is kind of a douchey thing. Like, here, let me – I'm going to tell you something let you probably you don't know because your brain is too small. That's not how – I do it as a way of, like, introduction. Like, I'm going to speak now. Yeah, I get Everyone it. calm down. <laughs> I didn't know he was like this in real life, Phil. That's kind of worrying. I was just yeah, I hide. Her. I hide nothing. I'm not like you, two faced losers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this episode is also finally sponsored by the Gabrielle Turner Stream Company, and we're out. We're gonna. Are we out? Are we done? Oh. Out of strings. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thanks for friendship. <laughs> Thanks for friendship. I will say the new nickel strings are pretty dope. Yeah. You mean all nickel. Al nickel. What I mean is al nickel. Thanks for friendship. So thanks for friendship. <laughs> thanks for friendship. <laughs> get up, get down, put your hands up to the sound. Get up, get down, put your hands up to the sound. Get up, get down, put your hands up to the sound. Get up, get down, put your hands up to the sound. Get up, get down, put your hands up to the sound. Get up, get down. Put your hands up to the sound. Get up, get down. Put your hands up to the sound. Just walking by like doo doo doo. Get up, get get up, get get up, get get up, get. And I'm cold, and I'm cold, and I'm cold.
Thanks for friendship. Thanks for friendship. Sexually explicit. 